let's go to Ask the Experts. Um, stick around because we're leaving and bringing a couple of other really good people in yeah, here. I was going to say, where are the experts? Are, are we the experts? How do I determine a good time for selling my last positions in my stocks and mutual funds? Josh from Oceanside. Wow, perfectly timed question. So I'll just tell you when the loss is meaningful enough for you to create a tax savings. I mean, if it goes down a couple dollars, forget about it. But if it goes down a few hundred or maybe a thousand or two, then you might want to take that loss. Next question. What do we got? Cindy from Encinitas writes, my husband and I have invested heavily in antiques and artwork. How do we account for those items in our plan for retirement? Ooh, that's an interesting question. What do you think, Joe? I don't think you do. I mean, oh, if you have a bunch of antiques and artwork, you should be pretty set for retirement. Yeah. <laughs> right? I don't know. Well, I, mean, I, I can tell you, so my dad loves gold coins, right? And right. They, he's invested in that. I wouldn't say heavily, but he invested in that enough to try to make, you know, make this meaningful for him. And he found that when he bought gold coins, he paid a premium to buy it and he, and he got a discount when he sold it. So just be aware when you're buying kind of rare coins or antiques or things like this artwork, you may be paying a premium and selling it at a discount. So it's, it's very difficult. You know, so, so where would you go? Right, I got a stamp collection, Al. Yeah. Right. I never knew that. <laughs> I, just, I I don't. I'm totally making this up. <laughs> so let's say if I did have a r rare stamp. Yeah. I mean, where do people go to? You know, even the, the, what the antique roadshow. So it's a great question. I mean, I don't know that much about stamps. I know coins. You go to a coin shop, and and but they have to make money too, right? That's why they sell at a premium and buy at a discount. So I just don't think it's. I mean, you may make money on this kind of thing, and maybe you get lucky, but it's I, I, it's hard to count that as a significant retirement asset. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess if you have a lot of art, right, that you've spent a lot of money on, right, you probably would go back to. The art dealer. Yeah, I suppose. You know, you, you're probably in those circles. And if I painted that art myself, I would Yes, go, but yeah, would, the problem is with anything, with questions like this, is that I think people are ill-prepared for retirement. And so they're scrapping and looking for everything possible to say, okay, well, you know what? This art is worth, you know, $20,000. Where in their mind, it's probably worth 20000 because you've looked at that piece of art for the last 20 years. But you have to, it's only worth what someone else is willing to buy. So you have to be careful of looking at, at asset classes of all of all kind, you know, coins, artwork, antiques, anything that's illiquid, you have to be careful when you're you're planning that for your overall retirement. Because if it's not traded, you have no idea what the price is, and then that's where it can get fairly dangerous. I yeah. think. Yeah, and I think Joe, I, I might add that uh, if you have these kinds of assets and and they are significant for you. Just go ahead and discount them rather heavily for your own planning because you may not get what you think you want out of it. Mm -hmm.